the global luxury brand market is valued at more than 280 billion euros or over 10 trillion baht. The United States, Europe, and China are the primary market for luxury goods. In Thailand, the top three brands that people associate with luxury are Louis Vuitton, Chanel, and Gucci. Other brands followed by Thai fashionista include Prada, Balenciaga, Fendi, Chilin, and German brands such as MCM. Today, the nation has the opportunity to interview father of Song Ju Group, Kim Song Ju, who restored MCM to fame in the fashion world. So, Adika, Mrs. Kim. So, firstly, welcome to Thailand. Yes. And how about Thailand in this trip? Well, I've been here quite a few times already. I love Thailand. More so is a beautiful Thai, Thai oh, lady. Thank you very much. And also, more than also, you are so kind. MCM is an aberration of the brand founder Michael Kramer Mushen, who launched the company in 1925 in the southern German city of Munich. He saw that the royal families and ruling class of the time used trunk style luggage. Inspired by this heritage style, he created a new brand identity that is modern and dynamic. The classic Vistel monogram design combined three elements. The MCM logo, the Roran Reed, which represents Vitali, and the monogram, the diamond pattern on the Bavarian state flag symbolize preciousness, durability, and enduring elegance. Connect with store represents the meeting of past and the future. MCM was at its peak in the mid 1990 with iconic model Cindy Crawford at its face. She traveled both to the United States and Europe to promote the brand. MCM then suffered in the global economic downturn of the 2000s. The business was acquired by the Korean company Songju Group in 2005, and the same management is still in place today. But why you decide to buy MCM? In fact, um, I mean, I was running top luxury brand from France and also top luxury brand from Italy. But I thought maybe German luxury brand should be something different. Yeah. That intrigued me. What is Germany about? Mm -hmm. You know, Germany for me, technology, science. Right. Mm -hmm. So that you can sell a lot of uh, good cars, Porsche, BMW, Mercedes Benz, or coming from. So technology we should associate. Mm -hmm. Now I apply a little more. Since now me as a Korean Asian on European brand work with a uh, European team because it's still very German brand. Mm -hmm. Because we have an office in Berlin, Zurich, New York and everywhere. So and also we have uh, forty nationalities already working with us. It's a truly small but truly globalized uh, brand we mm. are, company we are. That another very important, um, also out of this zeitgeist, is the East West meet together. Mm -hmm. That's very important because luxury should not be one sided. Right. Now, Asia became a big market, therefore, we should earn mm -hmm. and also we deserve true respect mm -hmm. from our Western counterparts. Yes, and after rebranding, yeah. what is the initial feedback from the market? Well, they thought, first of all, She's crazy, me. <laughs> so, actually, it was funny. Le Figaro, the French newspaper, about 10 years ago, had a big article. Even though I didn't fly in Paris, they interviewed me over the phone. During the acquisition of MCM, she was dubbed by many European media for her talents, like Genghis Khan, who was the founder and first great Khan of the Mongol Empire, which became the largest contiguous empire in history. And now this strange lady appeared, suddenly started very smart mm -hmm. and started to make a very cool edgy brand and start to expand so much the territory around. They thought that I am Genghis Kim. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I take it as a compliment. <laughs> <laughs> MCM was adopted early by K-pop star with help to re exhibit the brand in the Asian market. Rain, perhaps the most famous Korean singer, was also the most influential MCM fan. And he was my friend. So I said, Rain, I don't have money. Mm -hmm. Can you carry my red backpack oh. and uh, with a spike on it? Yeah. And you're in the stage or in the, at the airport, can you do it for me? He did. So suddenly, boom. Mm -hmm. So I remember after this big hit, in three year, years, we secured whole China, 
currently we have uh, 65 stores in China alone. Mm -hmm. Within three years, you conquer 1.5 billion wow. you know, population. So exciting. Mm -hmm. well, so for me, just use your brain mm -hmm. and also got miracles. Uh, <laughs> so I have seen you penetrate to the young generation did, and yes. you have like pop star, K-pop, yeah. or that that's I right. very popular. Yes, that's it's right. a Billie Eilish. I, I know. Yeah, <laughs> well, why you know are you <laughs> Why That's you right. choose her in brand ambassador? Well, because of Billie Eilish, for instance, she was uh, not only this young star as a hero, mm -hmm. but not because just famous. Actually, in some ways, uh, we invite her into luxury. After we covered the advertising campaign, all brands followed her. So we just tried to turn away from the, those uh, boring, traditional, stereotypy luxury. Mm -hmm. We want to be always, even regardless of what level income you come from, just your lifestyle determines your luxury style. Right. So that gives I think, more, as I say, creativity to our consumer mm -hmm. at the same freedom to our team. Yeah. Yeah. Do you think that for the pop star, K-pop or celebrity have their influence yeah. for the buyer yes. to buy the MCM That's product? That's true. What is the future directions of the MCMs? Yes, it's a very good question mm -hmm. because as we all know, future of this world, this market, is very uncertain. Right. However, when you face uncertain, you have to make yourself certain. So our direction will be more metaverse driven smart luxury. It means that not only physical space, uh, current stores will try to make more hybrid retail hub. It means that young generation, they end up doing all their purchasing from the mobile now. You're right. All the information through TikTok, everything going mm -hmm. on. And also, of course, they play around with Avatar mm -hmm. too. So we'll create the, the third space called Metaverse. Yeah. And also, secondly, our physical space will be interacting with them. So it means our store will be more playground, more than just the selling and buying mm -hmm. place. So this is the direction. So. Well, the second direction I would say is uh, yes, we are very open for IPO because one day we want to make a really big IPO in the open space. But mm -hmm. more so is uh, I want to just make a new history. As I mentioned before, as an Asian own, actually quite few Asians, they own brand with the money. Also, but two things I really want to make. One is as a women. Mm -hmm just own and uh, run the brand luxury in this scale first in history. Mm -hmm. And second, also Asian both and running by themselves is first time in history. Right. Also Asian women truly respected. Mm -hmm. So for me, concept of a globalization is not just one side of westernization. Real true globalization is East meet West equally. Right. This is the history I'm writing. Kim is renowned as the female leader who revived MCM in the fashion industry. Although she is famous in the fashion world, most people know little about her private life. Personal background ground, little bit crazy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because I come from one of the biggest family in Korea. And uh, my father owns all the, one of the biggest energy, like a city gas and uh, some other industrial operations. But that's not the thing. I was youngest among six, and uh, my parents, especially my father, kind of coming from a little more conservative background, right. he thought all the boys' sons supposed to inherit multi-billion dollar empire. Meanwhile, the girls like me, and supposed just getting into marry another power uh, family. So when I refused uh, this arranged marriage, Mm -hmm. which is tradition that time. I'm a little ancient lady, I have to say. Mm -hmm. And my parents got very mad. Yeah. So my father happened to disown me. Mm -hmm. That was around 1985. You can see how old I am. Oh. <laughs> but um, it was not the end. Therefore, made me to work very hard mm -hmm. to establish myself from scratch. Mm -hmm. So my first job, happened to be working at Bloomingdale's mm -hmm. in New York. Oh. At that time, Bloomingdale was one of the top luxury department stores. And also we had a legendary chairman, Mr. Marvin Trapp, and he really trained me mm -hmm. as I am. So around 1989, I returned to back to Korea, not because I want to be back to, I was so sick because I would never worked that hard. 
there in New York without money, without status, mm -hmm. without knowing anything about industry, it was really big adventure. Mm -hmm. Of course, big challenges. So I returned home, just tried to recuperate my health. But that was the time Korea, South Korea, started to open for luxury importation market. Mm -hmm. So they really started chasing after me. So that's how I became franchise of Gucci, mm -hmm. Sonia Kiel, Yves Saint Laurent, oh. and also lately even Marks and Spencer. Mm -hmm. And also lately also I became uh, the franchisee and mm -hmm. licensee of MCM Group. You has won numerous awards as a leading international business woman. After being named one of the seven most powerful women in Asia by Asia Week in 2001, and Woman of the Year by Korean National Council of Women in 2004, she was ranked among fourth top 50 Asian business women in 2012. Kim also became the first female to hold the position of president of the Korea Red Cross in 2014. Since we adopted the Beijing Core for Innovation 2014 at the 9th Asia Pacific Conference. So, what is her responsibility in the non profit organization? In fact, I was a president of a Korean Red Cross from 2015 to 17, three years. And also, I come from a very strong Christian background. So, my mother always taught us. Everything you got from the privileged background, mm -hmm. money, power, fame, whatever, is all given from God. Therefore, it's not yours. Mm -hmm. Therefore, you must work hard, honestly, mm -hmm. and also you must return back to society. Mm -hmm. So that's the way I look at business too. Honest practice, oh. make a good resources. 10% of a company res uh, profit always goes back to society. Oh. So yeah. Red Cross thing is very natural for me. Mm -hmm. So during those three years, uh, not only helping poor people, of course, in Korea in many ways, running Red Cross even hospitals, mm -hmm. I learned a lot. And also blood bank, which is oh, extensive yeah. actually operation. And at the same time, I had a chance to go to North Korea mm -hmm. and also really uh, organizing reunion of those divided families mm -hmm. since Korean War. Mm -hmm. and also some other humanitarian aids. So it was probably one of the most privileged experiences I ever had. And also even I left now Red Cross, but my heart never leaves Red Cross. It's been like for the profits from your operation is delivered to the society. Indeed. Right? Why do you have this concept? For me, real richness is not how much you have money in bank. Mm. Well, for me, real richness is heart and here and really enriching your neighborhoods who are in need, that comes back to your, to your heart. Right. That's true richness for me. Mm -hmm. That is a woman power yeah. to empower Indeed. the world. Yes, you got it, because we are born naturally motherhood ship. Yes. So before just uh, using everything for egoistic purpose, you uh, help your uh, family and your society. I think this is a truly the best most precious women's uh, leadership quality, mm. motherhood ship. Mm. Love. I'm so appreciate <laughs> for your concept and you thank you. Thank you. Thank very you much. so much. Thank you. Yes. Thank you so much. Yes. The luxury brand industry is dominated by businessmen and designers from the United States and Europe. However, MCM growth over the last 10 years, managed by Songju Group, reflects Asian people's potential in managing a global fashion brand. Meanwhile, its father Kim Songju also spent time helping South Korea society and traveling to speak at seminars in various countries to offer inspiration to women worldwide. Yes, men made all the history but we women will make you history. Thank you for watching Business Story with me, Opa Varansuda and The Nation. See you in next episode. Swadika.